Oh, hi there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Leah and I love makeup. Today I am going to do a full face, mostly a full face, of makeup and items that I've gotten in subscription boxes over the last year. And there's some hits and there's some misses. And if you want to see what they all were, make sure to stay tuned. Recently I was going through all of my makeup collection and I realized I have quite a bit of stuff that I got in subscription boxes. Um, in the past I've subscribed to FabFitFun. I am currently doing BoxyCharm and I just started the Allure Beauty Box. So I have quite a few different things. Um, definitely enough to do a full face many times over. So I just grabbed a few items. Some I've never used, some I haven't used in quite a while, um, and some I didn't love the first time I tried them, so we're gonna try them again. Uh, the only thing I don't have that's from a, or a subscription box is a foundation um, and concealer because you can't really mass send out makeup and have that be right for the right people. So I'll just be using the Joa Truly Yours foundation drops. I'm gonna be starting with these two priming products. This one is Dr. Brandt Needles No More No More Baggage ID Puffing Gel. Um, I don't have like puffy bags under my eyes. I'm more of a dark circle ass bitch. Um, but I guess this is supposed to be okay for dark circles too and you're supposed to put it on either before you do your makeup or you can just wear it on its own. Um, I tried it and I didn't really notice a difference except it felt kind of funny under my eyes so we'll see how we do it today. So it comes out it's this weird, it's like really thick and it's always really hard to get out. And it's kind of peach, which is nice because it'll be a, a canceling, like a color corrector, um, except it doesn't really correct the color. You'll see what I mean, hang on. So there it is on this eye and then this eye is just naked and I don't know. I feel like this had a pretty hefty price tag on it if I remember. In fact, let's look it up. Okay, this tube is $45. Um, I can feel it's like a little bit tight. It feels almost like if you put Elmer's glue on your face and it like, you know, dried down a little bit. Um, I just don't think this is a product that's like useful for me because I don't have bags I have dark circles and next is I'm going to use the cover effects blurring primer this is one that I got I think it may be my first boxy charm I can't remember but I really really like this one and I don't know why I don't use it more often um but we're gonna use it today that feels really nice like you can feel like it just feels smoother where your pores are um so I'm excited to see how this goes under some foundation. Recently, I have been having um, some issues with primer. Like I can't find one that seems to work for me. I've tried water-based and silicone-based and maybe I'm just not gonna be a primer person um, because I've tried them both and they both make my foundation like, I, I say the word curdled, but it doesn't curdle. It just like sits on top of my skin and just looks weird. So I, I don't know. And I thought, like, I was trying these new foundations, and I'm like, God, these foundations are all terrible. Um, but I think it was just that I was using primer on my skin, and maybe my skin just doesn't like primer, because this is doing the same thing. Can you see? And I just exfoliated, so it's not that I have dry skin. It's just my skin plus primer. Yeah, I think, I think I just, I can't use primer. It just doesn't work for me. I finished my foundation and I put on some concealer because we're not talking about concealer in this one. I did use the Maybelline Age Rewind Eraser Dark Circles Treatment Concealer in Light Pale. Um, I'm going to try to zoom you in, but can you see right here where the primer also is not looking so great under concealer? I just, I think it's my skin. Um, so I might have to do a de-stash of all my primers and I've got a lot of them up there. Next, I'm going to dip into this palette here. I haven't used this yet and I'm so excited to get it and I can't wait to use it. 
so this is the cover effects perfector face palette and I'm gonna use this little it's called a brightener right here and I'm just gonna use that on my under eyes um, on top of my concealer it's really pretty it looks almost like a highlight but it's not I don't think it's supposed to be a highlight it says brightener because there's two highlighters two contours no a contour a blush two highlighters and a finishing powder and this says brightener so I'm assuming it's an under eye brightener but we'll find out typically when I do this I use the pretty vulgar setting powder that I also got in a boxycharm um that's one thing I've noticed about boxycharm it oh, oh okay oh okay oh um Did, did I just straight up put highlighter under my eye? I think, I think I did. Uh, hmm. <laughs> okay, um, I just looked up on the Cover FX website what uh, this is for, not this. Um, and I read, apply brightener to the inner corners of the eyes and cupid's bow for a touch of brightness, not completely under your entire under eye. So I'm going to try to tone it down a little bit with the aforementioned pretty vulgar powder. That's as good as it's going to get. It actually doesn't look too bad. I would really like it a lot more without that pore or that under eye primer stuff. It like looks really crepey and like chicken skinny under my eyes. So, um... I don't like that at all. Today I'm going to do my brows with the Brow Gel Brow Gel, which I absolutely have been loving lately. Typically I do pencil my brows and I might hit them with a little pencil if this doesn't cut it. Um, but I got this one in the Allure Beauty box last month and I have an alternate one that I got in a boxy charm, but it was light so it was like a blonde one, which the color didn't work for me, but I really liked how the product worked. Um, so that's why this one's a really good one for me. It's brown, I think it's just called brown, brown hair. So here we go. Okay, that is just using the gel. And I think from kind of like an everyday, just like wanting to run out of the house, this would be okay. But um, my scarce little 90s brows need a little bit of help. So I'm gonna pencil a little bit and then I'll finish up with this. All right, so that's brows done. I love this gel. It just makes it look nice and natural and like, they feel good, they stay in place. It helps the pencil stay on longer. It's a great brow gel, I really like it. Moving on to eyeshadow, this palette that I will show you is the reason I got BoxyCharm. They did a huge brand trip about, God, it must have been a year ago, maybe a little bit longer, um, but they did this huge brand trip where they announced this palette that was a um, collab with Pure Cosmetics, and I thought the colors were so beautiful, and it was like fun and versatile and super sunny, sunny, summery, and I was really excited to get it, and it was like such a great deal to get this whole palette and BoxyCharm, so I this is mainly the reason I got BoxyCharm. Now, I was so disappointed with this palette that I almost canceled BoxyCharm. Um, it looks, I mean, and you can tell by the use of I, mean, I gave it a fair shake. It just, the shadows were really powdery and did not have much color payoff. So this guy has been like sitting in the collection here for quite a while and has not been used so we're going to try it again today and see if we can make something more out of it i'm going to start with this shade here it's called bell it's basically the exact same shade as this color here called squad except squad's a little bit of a shimmer and bell is mostly matte um, and i'm going to use it on this skinny glam semi glam this purple brush that i also got in a boxy charm Okay, here we go. I remember just really being so bummed about this palette and it being super like powdery and chalky. And then I feel like this is one thing. Um, BoxyCharm does this thing where they, I don't know if they like work with one brand and then just get a bunch of products, but I feel like they really repeat a lot of products because this is the one, two, third pure cosmetics product that I have. I've got one, two, four pretty vulgar products. I've got a few Dr. Brand products. Um, 
cover effects I've got at least two so it's like they get to work with these brands and then I don't know if it's just like their purchasing cycle is that they um, you know get a whole bunch of stuff and then space it out over a few boxes or if they just like build up that relationship or what but it's kind of a bummer when like you get pure palettes that don't work for you and then you have a bunch of them that I'm just never gonna use like there's this midnight masquerade one it's a face and shadow palette and this none of this will work on my face except maybe this highlight and then these are all shimmers so I don't know and they're the same formula they're super powdery and like very sheer coverage that doesn't show up at all okay we're gonna take a hard left on this whole look and we're gonna try this color down here called BFF instead okay that's a pretty color but I mean I don't know I don't know I just feel like it would be a little bit more for how deep the shade looks on here and I'm not even blending I'm just patting it on All right, next we're gonna try this teal color that was like the color that made everyone want this palette. It's called either Mia or M-I-A. I really dug in to pick up some of that shade and I'm gonna put that on my whole lid space here. Okay, now I am going to switch over to this Midnight Masquerade palette and grab this shade here called Exposed and do that on my lower lash line. So, I'm not super mad about how this look turned out. It's a, a bit patchy and I didn't blend. I really just placed and blended just a little bit and you can tell where I blended because it's patchy. So while the look turned out really fun, I don't feel like I would be using these brown or shadows. Now we're gonna do some mascara and how cute is this packaging? This is some I've actually never used. This came in the most recent boxy charm. I think Rose La Vian Rosa was the theme. So everything was kind of like rose goldy shades and pink and fun. So this is a mascara. It's from Manakadar Beauty. Um, it's Bloom Volumizing Mascara, and it doesn't have a shade listed. Oh, it's Jet Black, my favorite color. Okay, that is eyes done. I don't love the mascara, but like I always say, I give mascara a few tries to see how it goes. Um, first impressions, it transfers really bad. It dries very quickly, so it gets it's hard to put on a second coat, and I'm a three-coat-ass bitch. Um, so I did pop one layer of the Wander Beauty Mile High Club on top of it, and I actually really like how this looks. My lashes look really long, um, and this is very, very dark black. That was another thing about this one. The black wasn't black black. Um, so together, these look pretty good, and um, we might try it again. But it did transfer a lot. I had to go in and remove a bunch of pieces and um, touch up, which I don't like. And now we will move on to the rest of the face. I'm going to be using the Cover FX Perfector Face Palette because beyond the brightening powder that I used 
completely and correctly. I am so excited to try this. Um, this is the contour shade here and I'm just going to contour with it. And I'm going to be using this Aesthetica P12 brush that I got. I think it was in a FabFitFun. Um, but I like this one. It's got a nice big fat handle. That looks nice, huh? It's not too much, but it does bring out those cheekbones. All right. The blush shade in here is called Sublime. I think that's a really cute shade name. That's so pretty. <gasps> it's so subtle, but it's like a flush. Good job, cover effects. This is I like it. And finally, I'm going to use the pink little highlight up here. It's called Starlight, which is, if you haven't seen it or read the book, Starlight is a great story that um, was written by Neil Gaiman and then made into a movie, gosh, maybe 10 years ago. Oh, it's such a good movie. It's so cute. It's like a fairy tale for adults. Not like sexy, but like, you know, it's got grown up themes to it. Um, I definitely recommend it if you haven't seen it. It's just so nice. I think I like cry a little bit at the end every single time. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna try this brightener powder for what it's actually used for and put a little bit on my inner corner and under my brow bone here. With just like a, it's an Eco Tools brush. I like, I, this is like the only one I ever use for my inner corner, I don't know why. Yeah, that's nice. That's a really good use for this powder, not as an under eye brightener. So I like this is a win. <laughs> this is a loss win though. For lips, I don't know what to do. Do we go matchy matchy and super purple with Razzleberry Grande Lips Plumping Liquid Lipstick or Verona? I think we're going to go Verona from Ofra because this would be costumey. Like I'm doing my 80s costume, which actually this would be pretty perfect for. <laughs> that is dried down, so I'm going to put just a little bit of this Mally lip gloss on top of it. It's just nice. It's a little bit sticky, so it's nice for a topper, um, just for like a little bit of shine. This came in the, I think the Allure Beauty box. Um, it's, it's just a pink lip gloss, but it's, you know, not overly pink it's just enough for a little bit of shine and shimmer and finally because it is dry here i am going to use some sol de janeiro um bum bum cream right yep this is probably one of the best things i've ever gotten in a subscription box it feels so nice and it smells like heaven and it's amazing and i've had this little pot of it forever and I've still got plenty in there. I think this is like the $10 travel sample size you can get at Sephora. The big pot's like $45 and someday I will splurge on that if I ever get through this one. This was a fun walk down memory lane. There was definitely some misses and there were some definite hits. Um, I think overall getting a subscription box like BoxyCharm or the Allure Beauty box is kind of okay. Um, there's a couple of new ones out there. I think there's like a Yes Oh Yes and then Try Beauty and there's just a whole bunch of them. So take a look around and see if there's any that you like. Um, but the thing that's nice about them is they're relatively low price point. Like BoxyCharm is $20 a month and you get, I've never had one that's under $150 worth of value. Um, yeah, there's been some misses like things that are really bad shades, i.e this little guy. This is another pure product, which hmm, I don't like. It doesn't work for me, but it's a pure contour palette and the shades are so dark. Um, I just, I can't wear these. They work okay as an eyeshadow, but I've got enough brown and neutral eyeshadow palettes that this was such a bummer because, you know, it's a contour palette. But now I will say this though, at this time, I don't believe BoxyCharm had asked for like what range of skin tone you were in. When we got the cover effects ones, they did do a survey for everyone where you could select if you were, you know, light to medium or medium to dark 
maybe, did they have two levels or three? Um, but they did send you the correct palette based on your skin, you know, skin tone group. Um, so there was this option and I think there was a deep option. So that was kind of nice. Whereas everybody got this one and it didn't work for, you know, quite a few people, I guess. So that is kind of the risk you take when you get a subscription box is that you don't have control over what you're getting. But I do think that for the price that you pay versus the value that you get, if you have a few misses in there, it's okay because you're going to get some really good stuff too. Um, so like, for example, Wander Beauty mascaras, I would have never tried these and I absolutely love them. And another thing um, that's kind of nice about subscription boxes is you get things you would probably never just try or would never splurge on. For example, cover effects drops. I would never spend $45 on this. I just wouldn't. Um, but I have one now and it came in a box with a bunch of other stuff. This was actually a really great month, but they're fun and they're really nice to use, but I would never purchase it for $45 because I don't use it enough to make it something I would actually spend money on, but it's really fun to have and I'm really glad that I got it. Another thing that I feel is worth mentioning about subscription boxes, specifically beauty subscription boxes, is you usually get a tool or tools with them. Um, for me, in brushes alone, they're usually worth it. Like this is all of the brushes I've gotten in BoxyCharm. Just BoxyCharm. Um, so you get these tools every month and they're nice brands. They're like Luxie and The Vintage and Moda and Alamar. So like you get nice brushes, which I think one of these brushes alone is probably worth $20. So you get basically that plus a bunch of other stuff a month. I don't know. Um, but that's one thing I really do appreciate about beauty boxes is you get tools with them. Um, so yeah. And with that, I will end. I feel like I've talked forever and this has gone on for a hundred years. So thank you if you're still here. Thanks for sticking it out with me. Um, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel and I'll love you forever. All right, have a super great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, 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 bye.